Hello, 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 and happy new year. It is the first Wednesday of the entire year, first Wednesday in January. I am your host, Joanne Angel Barry Cologne. If you are on the show, hopefully you are looking to be here today, which is Joanne's Cosmic Energy Radio Show. If that's the case, you're in the right place. Hello, hello, hello. How is everybody today? I myself, I'm feeling quite bright, lots of red going on. I heard somewhere along the line that 2022 carries the energy of red energy. And why is that? If you know anything about energy, um, color of energy, red itself is a fire energy. So it's an energy of action. And let's, let's just start off right off the back that we literally started off the new year with a sign, a zodiac sign that takes action. So it would only make sense that we'd wanna wear red. Red is red as often as you can. Now also, interesting enough, in the Chinese philosophy, the color red is actually a sign of good luck and prosperity. So if you don't have red, whether it's a red shirt, red blouse, red undergarment, red pants, whatever it is, go out and get some, especially if it happens to be your Chinese animal year, which I believe we are going to be in the year of the tiger, if I heard that, if I read that correctly, which I'll bring more of that to you as we get closer, because I do not believe we are close to Chinese New Year just yet. I do believe that goes, that's further on in January at some point, but I'll give you that insight as we get there. Want to give a shout out to to one of my advertiser sponsors that does support my show, which is Intuition of the Souls, hosted by Kitty and Amy. They have amazing, amazing programs that they do offer, a lot of free programs for that matter, so definitely go check them out. They have an amazing course, uh, I don't know if it's a course, a group, I'm going to call it a group, that meets every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern through about 10.30 Eastern. It's a card share where all and everybody who does any type of readings, whether you're using cards, runes, crystals, or just your own intuition, hey, that's that's powerful too. You can join that group. It's a free group. So go ahead and look them up. It's a fun group. And then they have a lot, a lot of other courses that, of course, you pay for to take advantage of. So go ahead and check them out. So here we are on the first Wednesday of the month, I want to bring to you cosmic energy so you understand what is going on in the world for you, each and every one of you. This is energy that's going to influence and impact your life for this month. And you can utilize this energy, this insight that I'm going to provide for you for the entire season of like I like call Capricorn season. Every zodiac has a specific season that they are in and we are in Capricorn season as we speak now before I go ahead and do that what I would like to do and I'm hoping that I can do this without burning myself is I'm going to set up some incense just to get the energy flowing so let me just do that get that energy in there and I invite you doesn't want to go out I invite you to do the same that if you have whether you want to use incense you want to use essential oils whatever it is if you have crystals pull them along with you and just allow yourself to clear your energy so you can be open to this amazing energy that we are moving into that we've moved into as of new year's eve you know here we are um, in 2022 carries a major energy now let me just put this down If you only saw my desk right now, you'd be surprised on how I'm actually organized enough to have everything on my desk that I have on my desk. But we're going to do the best we can. So as I was saying, 2022 carries a very powerful, potent, I'm going to use the word potent today, potent energy. And why is that? In numerology, number 2022 carries a six energy. And it's pretty simple on how how I come to that number. You add those numbers up. You add 20, 22, all up, and it comes up to a six. And in numerology, the number six means healing, nurturing, taking care of yourself and also taking care of others, your family, your home. And when we speak of the home, it's not just your shelter that you live in, but also the home, your actual body, which plays a huge role in this energy. I'm just going to get this out of the way for now. 
All right, there we go. Keep that there. It's still flowing, just not in front of my face. So anyway, so it's about taking care of your home, your physical body, and your shelter, of course. And we could take that one step further, and even your home or where you work. Whether you work in an office space where you have this big, big office that you're in, or you're working in these little cubicles, or maybe you're even working from home since the last two years for that matter. And that's the sixth energy in numerology. Now in astrology, the sixth house is associated with Virgo. And when we think about sixth house associated with Virgo, that's about organizing, scheduling, your routines, and also health, fitness, and wellness. So there's a major emphasis right now on health, fitness, and wellness. And coincidentally, shall we use, and I don't use that word often, but coincidentally, I find it quite interesting on, it's the sixth six, uh, universal energy year, and it's the new year. And we have that sixth energy right at the time frame where so many of us are focused on wanting to, I'm going to use my term, release those extra pounds they might have put on during the holiday season, or for that matter, put on the extra pounds during the course of the pandemic, which there are a lot of people out there who have put on an extra 19, 20, even 22 pounds over the last two years. And you might be one of those people who are very, very, very eager to release that weight, especially now because of the energy that we are in with the six collective energy. Now, when we think about the six collective, which in numerology, I'm bouncing back there again, this is energy the entire planet feels, whether you're conscious of it or not. So in the back of your, my, your mind, you might be actually thinking about, wow, I need to drop this weight. Or because again, it is January, most people set these resolutions to want to lose 10, 20, 30, 40 pounds in a period of time, not realizing that it took time to get that weight on. So it's going to take time to take the weight off. So even if you are setting that, having that mindset to like want to change the way you eat, you want to exercise more rapidly, you want to be really consistent. But the real question is, are you going to be able to maintain that consistency for the long haul of it, not just for the short period of time of when you release that weight? And I use the word release. Now, let me explain to you why I use the word release versus losing. And from my point of view, it's very common sense, but not for everybody. When we think about losing weight, the average person, if you lose your cell phone, if you lose your wallet, if you lose your purse, if you lose your favorite cologne or perfume, you're going to go looking for it. In fact, you're going to tear your entire house up to find that thing you lost because you want it back. And it's the same thing that goes with body weight. So if you are losing weight, if you are looking to lose that 10, 20, 30, or even 50 pounds, psychologically, you are going to go back to look for that weight because you've called it in. And I used to word called it in because at some point or another, you needed that weight to protect you from some sort of trauma that you've experienced. And based on that trauma, it then connected with, with different emotions that was, was connected with that weight. So therefore, if you start losing that weight, once you reach that, that goal that you've lost, psychologically, because you haven't really done the connection of what is connected to emotionally and the fact that you've lost the weight, your, your, psycho, your psyche is going to start saying, I need that weight back. It was protecting me from something. And then you start to look for it back. And that's where you regain the weight back. And as a holistic personal trainer, being in this industry for well over 30 years, believe me when I say I have witnessed hundreds, hundreds of people who have reached that 50 pound weight loss goal. They were so excited. And I use the word weight loss goal, so excited. And that once they've stopped doing the things that helped them lose that weight because they didn't release it, they'd start to bring it back in. And they start to regain that weight back. And sometimes they even gain more than what they've actually lost. So what I like to do today is I like to help you understand that during Capricorn season, because that's what we're in, Capricorn season, 
This is an opportunity for you to release the emotional weight that you are carrying. And when I use the term emotional weight, the emotional weight is connected to all the things that we connect to on an emotional level that might very well cause us to carry excess weight that over time may show up as physical weight. And the only way that we are going to release the physical weight is tapping into the emotional component to the weight. And when you do this, it helps you to start to slowly release the physical weight that shows up on your body. Now, when we think about Capricorn season, not sure if you're aware what Capricorn season is all about, what Capricorn is associated with in astrology. It is the 10th house in astrology. And when we think about the 10th house in astrology, that is associated with the work that you do. There's three compartments that I put this under. The physical work where you go to nine to five, which is your job. Your body work, which is the work you do on your body. And then your spiritual work, your spiritual practice to being in purpose, as I like to call your soul's purpose and your calling. Now, if any of those three are not in alignment, then the work that you're doing for Capricorn season is going to be extremely important in order for you to release that weight that you're looking to release. And what do I mean by that? It's called boundaries and value. That is like the biggest process on Capricorn season. That's really what it's all about is your boundaries and how you value yourself and setting up new boundaries. Because when you think, about the whole factor that we are in 2022, whatever boundaries you had or didn't have in 2021 or even 2020, perhaps it's time to really sit and reflect on what was working for you and what was not working for you. And when I use the word working, I'm specifically speaking about your work that you do, your nine to five. Now you will hear me if you follow me, here on my radio show, or you watch my, my um, other show on TV, or you're following me on my YouTube channel, or my lives on Facebook, whatever the case may be, wherever you're following me on social media, you will constantly hear me speaking about being in alignment to your soul's purpose or your calling, as opposed to just having a job. If you have a job and where you work, whether it's your boss, your the other employees or just the customers or your clients do not value what you bring to the table and you are stressed 90% of the time. That is something you need to work on to release. So you do not carry that as weight on your mind, body, and spirit. And that is part of the process of how Capricorn season can actually help you release the emotional weight that you hold on to. Now, I want you to hold that thought just for a moment, because what I like to do is I like to also talk about our planets that are in Capricorn season as we speak, because besides the sun energy, we have currently three other planets in Capricorn season. Now, we recently had four, which was the new moon that we just had, which was in Capricorn over this weekend. So originally we would have had five, but now we have four. And those are Venus, our planet of relationship, love, and money. And that too needs to have a boundary. That too needs to be evaluated based on your values regarding the relationships you have with yourself, with others, and money. And then understanding that money is just an energy exchange. That's all it is. And I was actually saying this today, I don't know if it was a live or a general conversation, but so many of us get really stressed out when it comes to money, when it comes to like presenting our price out to a client. We get really nervous. We get unsure of ourselves. We, we start stumbling over our words because we're not sure of how the other person is going to accept that investment. But all it is is a money exchange. And it also shows how you value your calling. And that's really what it is. And if we can all get on the same page with that and understand that that's all it is, is you're valuing your calling. And you're also valuing the things you're investing in, which plays a huge role. 
So that's not Venus energy, love, relationship, and money. And it's in retrograde, which means this is a period of time where you are reflecting, reviewing, retuning, recharging the energy of your relationships, how you love yourself, how you love others, how you value yourself, and what boundaries do you need to to recreate or create when it comes to Venus in retrograde. Venus will be in retrograde until January 29th. So we have a while. It went retrograde on December 19th. So we have a while with Venus being in retrograde and helping us in this amazing energy of Capricorn season. Then we have Mercury, planet of communication. How we communicate in our workplace, how we communicate about the work that we do, how we communicate with our body. Now, I want to just bring this in a minute because, again, as a holistic personal trainer, that is my theme, that is my passion, that is my focus for all clients, is learning how to talk to your body, learning how to be kind to your body, loving your body, treating your body with respect. And that means honoring your body in reference to making sure you are doing what you need to to do to keep your body healthy. So that's that Mercury energy of communication and scheduling time to take care of your body. So if if for whatever the reasons are, you are not committing to your body every single day, meaning preparing your meals and knowing that you have about four to five meals a day, getting yourself to a workout, working out in your day, every day, not just three days a week, not just once a week, but every day. Seven days a week, you need to move your body one way or another. It's extremely important to keep your body active and scheduling that time in. If there's one thing that's definitely going to be on the horizon for the entire year of 2022 is that concept of scheduling your health, wellness, and fitness into your routine, into your calendar, on your calendar. There's 365 days to this year. So therefore, you should have 365 days of activity for your body. I like to call it functional cardio. We do yoga yoga and stretches. We do meditation. We do weight lifting. However you want to call it, weight lifting, interval lifting, whatever it is, resistance band, Whatever it is you want to call, but you want to get your body moving every day of 365 days. And of course, you don't want to do the same things every day, but you do need to get a routine going, which of course, if you don't know how to do that, that's where I come into play. I can help you. After all, that is my passion as a holistic personal trainer is to help you schedule you on your calendar so you are doing something every single day for 365 five days without skipping this is not about well i'm going to take sundays off because i get a break no you're going to be doing something every single day because you want to make sure you are treating your body with love care and just as you would any other relationship your body is a relationship with yourself and you want to learn to communicate kindly to your body and that's that mercury energy now mercury He's going to go retrograde, which we already know that. Mercury retrogrades three to four times a year. And our first retrograde of Mercury for 2022 will take place January 14th through February 4th. And it will be in Capricorn season. So it's going to give us some time to reboot, to reflect, review how we communicate with ourselves, how we communicate to our bodies, how we are scheduling time to take care of our body. Because you only have one. You only have one body. No matter what kind of surgery you may go and do, you still only have one body. And you still have to take care of your body if you decide to have cosmetic surgery done on your body. Whether that be Botox, you you get a boob lift, you get a butt lift, you get your skin pulled in. Whatever it is you're looking to do to your body that's not naturally um, composed, you still have to maintain that once you have it done. So there's no such thing as a quick fix and then you never have to do a workout again. You still have to maintain a healthy body, whether or not you're going to get yourself all fixed. So keep that in mind. Now, let's talk about another planet. I was doing some research this morning 
prior to getting onto the show today because I like to bring insight. I like to help you understand the cosmic energy, the planets, and how these planets actually do help each and every one of us. So our, another planet that I really, really want to talk about, which is Mars. Currently, Mars is in Sagittarius energy. And I use the word currently because what's going to happen in less than, what is it, two and a half weeks, January 24th, Mars is going to be joining Capricorn season. Now, I want us all to take a deep breath on that one because Mars is our planet of action. Mars is the planet of, I need to take action right now. Mars is like what we like to say, the, the warrior, but the angry, angry, like needs to get done, very aggressive, where it's no longer going to be, I'm going to calm myself into this. No, once Mars joins Capricorn season, things have to get done. Now, the plus side of this is, as Mars does join Capricorn season, Capricorn season will slowly be ending, which is a good thing, slowly be ending. So it will not be the point where we're going to have too many planets in Capricorn, whereas right now, again, we have four planets in Capricorn season. Once Mars joined, there will be four planets, uh, excuse me, five planets in Capricorn season, but only for four days. So not so bad, not so bad. So let's talk a little bit about this full moon that's coming up, also coming up on January 17th. So we have a little while, but I um, want to speak about it because I want to get you prepared for this, this full moon in Cancer. Full moon in Cancer on January 17th. Cancer is the opposition of Capricorn. Cancer is associated with the fourth house, which is all about our home, our family, and nurturing the home and family. So think about that full moon energy, which is all about how we feel about our home. And what kind of boundaries do you have at home? Well, how do you how do you feel about your home? Do you feel valued? Do you feel appreciated? Do you re feel respected in your home? And during this full moon, this might be a perfect opportunity for you to start working on what does not work in the home might be a really great time to start shifting that energy. And as I say, when I speak about the home, it's not just always about your actual home where you live, your shelter. It's also where you work. Do you feel appreciated? Do you feel valued? Do you feel respected? Do you feel heard? Because again, Mercury's in Capricorn se uh, series, um, season. So all of these things might be coming to the table. You know, all of a sudden now you might be thinking about, well, why is it that this is taking place and that's taking place? It's all due to Capricorn season. So when we think about this whole process of releasing the weight, the, the weight that you're holding on to could very well be related to things that no longer serves your new purpose. And when I use the word the new purpose, is not a new purpose. It's just that being that your vibration is changing, you may be more and more aligned to your purpose, your soul's calling. And because you're more aligned to it, it may be creating a... Um, not a resistance, but a energy of like something's not aligned and I feel like I need to change something. So I want to just share a really quick story. I was working with a client last night and she was sharing with me that she had such a stressful day at work and she was this close to going into her boss, boss's office and saying, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. This close. And then she was also sharing with me a week ago a friend of hers was speaking to her about this new possibility that she might be taking on this new position at a job and they worked together in the past. And if she'd be interested in joining her and she was just like, that would be great. So her friend sort of planted a seed that gave her the confidence and the courage to start thinking about the possibility of maybe my current job has come to an end, which is why she's this close to leaving. 
Now, I had said to her yesterday that because it has occurred yesterday where she's this close to leaving, there's a good probability that that situation is going to become more heightened and is going to get to that point where she actually does finally take the steps to leave. And that's what Capricorn season is doing for many of us, helping us to release the emotional weight that we hold on to, to things that really no longer serve. And that emotional weight that we hold on to shows up as the physical weight, that if you dare step on a scale, you might notice the extra 5, 10, 15, 20 pounds that you might be carrying due to the unnecessary stresses that you are just not ready to put down. And that's really what it comes down to, is being ready to put down what no longer serves. And every chapter of our life has only but so many pages to it. So you might be invested in a job for 15, 20 years. After that 20 year point, you might have to sit and really ask yourself, can I continue to grow in this space? Now, when I use the word grow, I don't mean this way. I mean spiritually. Is this job my soul's purpose? Does this job feed my soul? Does this, is this job my calling? And if it's not, perhaps it's time to take that step and start looking into something that's going to serve your purpose and feed your soul because that's really what it's all about. We are humans. We are spiritual beings. And our work that we came here to do needs to be aligned to our soul's purpose. But when we think about releasing the weight and allows, uh, allowing Capricorn season to help you, this is a perfect time to start questioning how you value yourself and how others value you as well. Do, do people appreciate how hard you work? In fact, I was chatting with another client the other day and she's always sharing with me how she works through her lunch period, meaning that she'll literally sit at her desk with a computer and she'll be doing her work as she's eating. So she doesn't take a lunch break. And I have encouraged her in the past that maybe she needs to start changing that. Because again, like anything else, you need to be mindfully involved with your lunch break, meaning you need to know that you're eating. When you are trying to do multiple things at the same time, it does not do well with your digestion. It literally creates a stress in your belly. And that itself is going to create a, um, a disalignment to your chakra system known as your, your soul tax. So that's something else that I wanted to bring to her attention that maybe she needs to really sit and evaluate. Does her boss even appreciate the fact that she doesn't take a break? And that she just works through her full day. And then nevertheless, when her day is done, her day is not really done. Because every now and then, the cell phone will go off and email will pop up. Here it is 9 p.m. Her workday is done, but she's still working. So the real question is, does her boss really value all that she's doing for that job? And this is the Capricorn season. This is the weight that many of us hold on to because we are <clears throat> we want to show up we want to we want to say we could do it all and unfortunately it doesn't always work to your best advantage so this is the perfect time to start evaluating how you show up start evaluating what you bring to the table and start asking yourself, am I really being valued? Am I being respected? Am I being honored? Even though, yes, you might be the most, you might be doing extremely well at work, but how well are you valued at this time? And is what you're doing really honoring your soul's purpose and feeding and fueling your calling? And that is the question you might want to ask yourself, which will be the very thing that's going to help you start to release the emotional weight that you hold on to. Those 10, 15, or 50 pounds that you carry day in and day out based on not being aligned to your soul's purpose. So I want you to think about that. So what I like to do is we're going to take a quick commercial break. And then when I get back, I'm going to go through each zodiac sign to give you some insight to all the planets that are in Capricorn season, pull a card for each zodiac sign and see what's in store for each and every one of you. I'll be right back.
Hi everyone, I'm Kitty Foss. And I'm Amy J. And we're Intuition of the Soul. We are a Facebook and YouTube group that has created a sacred spiritual place to look at your spiritual practices. And there's too much to tell you about what we do, but let me tell you, we have weekly activities, we have monthly activities, and you are not going to want to miss our Spiritual Practitioner Series. So join us on Intuition of the Soul. Aloha. Aloha. Are you ready to release issues from your tissues as you release emotional weight and fall in love with yourself? While well, I get to witness your transformation of becoming the best version of who you are already. Hello, I'm Reverend Joanne Angel Barry Cologne, your certified holistic personal trainer, intuitive healer, cosmic energy reader, medical astrologer, master of numerology, the creator of the Chakra Balance Numerology Cosmic Energy Forecast Deck, and the owner of Holistic Fitness located in Queens, New York. I work with women and men by referral. All services are available via Zoom and on site. Send all questions to healingwithin76 at gmail.com. I do look forward to helping you release issues from your tissues as you release emotional weight and fall in love with yourself. Hello and welcome back to Joanne's Cosmic Energy Radio Show. I'm your host, Joanne Angel Barry Clone, and I'm super excited to have you here. If you're just joining, know that you can go and catch us back on the replay, Facebook. I don't know where the hell I'm, where the hell my platform's at. Spotify, iTunes, Audible, they're all over the place. You can find it just in case you missed the very beginning of the show. What I'd like to chat with you about now is giving you some insight to all the planets that are in Capricorn season. As, as I've mentioned, there are currently, I believe there's four. We have the Sun, we have Venus, we have Mars, we have Pluto. Didn't talk about Pluto, interesting enough. Pluto, from being that I did not mention it earlier, Pluto is the planet of transformation. Pluto is going to help us, literally help us, or more like force us, to do what we need to do to let go of whatever it is that might be connected to the physical body weight that needs to be released. So if you're not willing to do this on your own, Pluto is definitely going to help you out. So what I like to do is I like to provide a card for each zodiac sign based on all the planets that are actually in Capricorn season. And there's a lot of them. And this is also going to be associated with the moon sign and your rising sign. So if you have Capricorn in any of those, sun, moon, and rising, Mercury, Venus, and Pluto, the, this card reading is going to be associated with that based on your zodiac signs. So I'm going to pull a card for each zodiac sign, one card, and see what's in store for you. Now, the card is going to provide you three elements. It's going to provide you a color, which is associated with your shoppers, a number that's going to provide a hidden message and also connect you to something with the astrology. And it's also going to give you an affirmation that you can use to help raise your vibration and also add to your story. So let's see what's in store for Aries. So for Aries right now, it's all about focus. So what are you focusing on? When we think about Aries, it's, it's the first house, but depending on where it sits in your chart, what do you focus on? What do you need to know in Capricorn season? How can you, how can you embrace this energy in Capricorn season? And when we think about the third eye, the, th the third eye is about you being in that space where you can visualize yourself being the healthiest version of you and allow yourself to take the steps so you can be the healthiest version of you. 13, one and three, which is a four energy. Four is all about building that new foundation with your physical body, building that new foundation with valuing yourself at your workplace, in your, your home, your shelter. It's all about that foundation, finding that balance and being able to focus on what it is you would like it to be as opposed to what it is. So rather than thinking about what it's not, oh, it's not happening this way, it's not happening that way, stay focused on what you would like it to be and you'll see more of that. So that's Aries energy. 
So when we move into our Taurus energy, just want to just give myself a little note here. One moment. Okay, we're moving into Taurus energy now. So Taurus is all about the relationships and associated with Capricorn season. We are looking at the ninth house energy. So let's see what's in store for Taurus. For ninth house, which is all about our spiritual awareness and really tapping into our spiritual knowledge. Cards in reverse though. So it's about compassion. It's quite interesting when we think about Taurus energy and partnerships, physical and material possession. How can you feel, how can you bring in more compassion for yourself and others? Valuing yourself so appropriate for what we're talking about. Also a four energy, also a four energy, which is about your foundation. Third eye as well. So start being more compassionate to yourself, and you'll start to call more of that in. So that's Taurus. We're moving into Gemini energy. Gemini is all about the eighth house, learning to let go of things. So Gemini, this might be a really great time for you to evaluate how you're being valued, what your boundaries are, and walking away from things that don't honor you. Your cards in reverse. It's about faith. So you have to have faith. You have to have faith that if you're not feeling valued in your workspace, it might be a great time to start walking away. Honor your heart. Let go of that heaviness. Your card is 56, which is 11. So when we think about that 11 hand energy, it is really about healing your relationship with self. And sometimes the best way to heal any relationships is really reevaluating your boundaries and how your boundaries, what needs to change in your boundaries and how you can value yourself better and others will value you as well. So that is Gemini. All right. We are looking at cancer in the seventh house energy right now associated with Capricorn, which is about bringing more balance into your body, bringing more balance into your workplace, bringing more balance into your home. All these cards are in reverse. Why is that? So we look at karmic completion. So cancer, when we think about your energy and that balance, where do you need to complete something when it comes to karmic energy? And when we think about getting grounded, that's about finding that balance, that support. And it's time to do something different. It's time to do something different. Something new coming in as you reflect on finding that balance between your mind, body, and spirit. So that's cancer energy. Leo. Leo is all about the sixth house energy, which right in alignment to the universal energy, scheduling, organizing, and really wanting to be conscious about your health, fitness, and wellness process. So let's see what's in store for Leo. Well, Leo, you also have focus, focus, third eye energy. So Focusing on health, fitness, and wellness, being sure that you put it on your calendar, schedule it in so you're not missing any days of your health, fitness, and wellness programs. One and three is a four. That's your foundation. So this is really about consciously taking care of your body, your mind, your spirit for Leo. Love that. Virgo, we're looking at the fifth house energy, which is about having fun, expressing yourself, in creating, creating, creating value. And are you creating value at your workplace? Are you having fun moving your body? I love that. Let's see what's in store for our Virgos. All right, Virgos, you have to surrender. You have to surrender. Surrender something during Capricorn season. And as you do, do work with the heart. So your heart can feel lighter, and this will help you to release any excess weight that you're holding on to. Six and eight works out to a five, a change of energy, changing something so you can release what you need to release that, you are, that no longer serves your mind, body, and spirit. So really work on surrendering that energy during the Capricorn season so you can release that extra emotional weight that you carry so you can feel better in your own body and value yourself more. Libra energy. So Libra, we're looking at 
the fourth house strategy, which is about being home, being home, finding more balance in your home. And when we talk about home, again, it doesn't have to be the shelter. It could be your physical body. It could be your workplace. Is, are you experiencing balance at work? Are you working from home and maybe you've lost balance? Maybe you've lost that whole balance in your foundation due to the fact that you're literally working from home. So you're rolling out of bed and getting in front of your computer and you're spending hours sitting there. Let's see what the cards have in store for you. What chakra do you need to work on? Love it. It's a rebirth. So this is an opportunity for you to have a rebirth. This is an opportunity to reevaluate what is going on in your home and how you can shift it around a little bit. Also, it's about the high heart. So it really is about bringing more joy into your schedule, allowing yourself to feel, feel more grateful and appreciated in your home space. Two in one, which is that three energy, which is all about how you want to communicate in your home space, how you want to be heard, how you want to express yourself, and also listen to what others have to say as well. Love that for Libra. All right, we're looking at Scorpio. So Scorpio, you are in your third house energy, which is about communication. Communication, maybe it's time to have that conversation. Maybe it's time to set a boundary. Maybe it's time to let go of how you work around the clock and thinking you're being appreciated, but you're not. So let's see what's in store for Scorpios. Scorpio, your card's in reverse. So this is about your spiritual guidance. So this is about taking some time to sit quietly and reflect, reflect on what it is you need to hear, what it is you need to say, and finding that balance between listening and speaking. Three and four is that seven. So this is really about taking time to go within, sit quietly and gain that insight that spirit has in store for you. As you do, that the, the, the word I'm hearing is heaviness that you carry in your heart from whatever it is that you're carrying heaviness from that will help you to release this weight during Capricorn season. So trust that. All right, Sagittarius. Sagittarius, you're in your second house, which is all about your partnership that you have with yourself, partnerships with others, and also partnerships with your spiritual wisdom. So let's see what's in store and how can you release emotional weight during Capricorn season? What chakra can help you? All right, so yours is about the heart as well. There's a lot of heart work going on, which gives me the indication that we carry a lot of heaviness, which is where all our emotions sit to begin with. So it's family. So this is really about connecting with your family. That's the partnership, the family. And know that your workplace could be family as well, especially if you've been there forever. One in five, which works out to be a six. So it really is time to schedule some family time in. If you've been really busy, overworked, schedule that family time in. Sit with, with your children, your parents, your friend, your sibling, whatever it might be. But it's time to do that. And that will, of course, help your heart to feel happier and lighter as well. So let's move right into Capricorn, which is the first house energy. What's in store for Capricorns and how Capricorns, with all this energy in your sign, how this is going to really help you. Release weight. And let's see what shocker is in store for you. Ah, the master teacher. This is a perfect time to call on master teachers. This is a perfect time to open yourself up to connecting with mentors and also recognizing that you too are a master teacher. The third eye here. So begin to visualize yourself as the perfect version of you. If there is weight that you wish to release, see yourself being that healthier version of you. Three and eight is the 11, which is really about healing the partnership that you have with your body. And know that you are a master teacher. You are the teacher to your own body. So start incorporating some healthier habits during this Capricorn season. After all, it's your season. All right. Aquarius, 
This is your 12th house associated with Capricorn. So this is really about tying up those loose ends, letting things go, tapping into your intuition and allowing yourself to reevaluate because Aquarius, you're all about anal analyzing everything. So this is an ab absolutely great time to review where your values are, where your boundaries are, where you feel appreciated, how you feel would work. Are you feeling successful? Do you feel that you're able to climb the ladder some more or are you stuck? Let's see what cards in store for you. Let's see. What a perfect card for Aquarius. I don't know if you can see that. The lighting in here is a little off. Do, 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 do. Let's see if I can get that in a better writing. Guess not. That's as best as it's going to get. Anyway, the affirmation is success. And success for Aquarius. What a perfect card because you are in your 12th house energy. So it really is about letting go of things that do not make you feel successful, do not help you feel successful. That eight energy is really about letting things go so you can transform into what it is that's going to best serve you so you can feel more successful. The solar plex is all about trusting this process and recognizing there are no limitations. You have unlimited opportun opportunities to be successful. So if where you are right now, you feel there is no more, way, no other way to climb the ladder anymore, you climbed as high as you could, it's time to let it go and move into something that's going to help you feel more successful. Trust the process. Trust the process. All right, Pisces. Last but not least, you're in your 11th house energy. So this is really about tapping into your community, having your community help you, and asking, asking yourself, does your community value you as well? Do you value yourself with your community? Let's see what cards in store. Interesting card here for Pisces, transformation. So there is definitely a transformation coming in. There may be a transformation coming in with your community where all of a sudden you may see yourself around a whole different community out of the blue. One in eight is a nine. So this is really about letting things go and allowing yourself to trust and really, really evaluate how you feel in regards to feeling valued, what boundaries you have, and are you ready for that transformation? The solar plex energy is about trusting this process, feeling worthy enough of valuing yourself so you can let go of people, things, and places that do not honor you and value you and value the service that you bring to the table. So you too can release the weight in Capricorn season. So I am loving how these cards are just so perfect for each and every one of you and how, yes, Capricorn season can definitely help you release the emotional weight that you are carrying. However, you have to be willing to do this work. You have to be willing to say that you are done and raise your hand and just step away. Otherwise, again, when we think about our planets and we've recently just had our north and south nodes shifting out of Gemini and Sagittarius and moving into Taurus and Scorpio. And with that being said, and along with Pluto in Capricorn, and also Uranus in Taurus energy, there's going to be a lot of help from our planets helping us to let go of things that no longer serve. And you might end up kicking and screaming because you might not be ready because of your fears, but allow yourself just to let go. And as you do, the weight that you're looking to release will be released as well. Because 90% of the time, the weight that we hold on to is really associated with the emotions that we carry. And those emotions are connected to the, the alignment and the relationship we have with food. Now, that's a whole different other show, which I promise I will bring to you in reference to the relationship we have with food and how that's associated with our weight as well. And I promise you, I will bring you that topic, that conversation at a different time, but not today. So today, just to be sure and to be reassured, know that Capricorn season is definitely your season to release weight. As long as you're willing to do the work, you have to be willing to do the work. Otherwise, the weight that you hold on to, that's associated with all your external forces, whether it be the job that stresses you out, the relationship that you're in that stresses you out, 
even yourself stressing you out. All of these things are connected to the weight that you hold on to. And you have a choice to make that decision today to start shifting the energy and start releasing the emotional weight that you carry, that you carry in your body, in one area of your body or another. And you have that choice to make that change today. And that by the time we hit Aquarius season, you may be a lighter version of who you are, which then helps you be to be the better version of who you are because you're no longer carrying the emotional weight. But the one thing I want to leave you with today is to remember, it's not about losing weight. When you lose weight, when you go on these fad diets, when you go on these challenges just to get the weight off, remember, this is something you're going to have to continue to do in order to keep the weight off. Unless you approach the weight, you're, the weight that you're looking to release based on the emotional attachment, that is the only way the weight is going to stay off. So if you are signing up for a, any type of challenge, 12-week challenge, whatever it is challenge, if you are doing some sort of fad diet to drop the weight that you're looking to drop, I personally guarantee that weight will come back. And I want to help you prevent that from happening and help you to release the weight that you're looking to release, not lose the weight. And do it the right way by tapping into whatever the emotional connection is to that weight. And being able to dig deep, deep, deep to where that weight started from. And when you're ready psychologically to do this work, I want you to reach out to me. I want you to reach out to me and you and I can have a conversation and tap into what I like to call the self-growth discovery session to discover who you are, where this weight came from, and are you really, really ready to release the weight and keep that weight on off? going forward without just losing the weight again been in this industry for well over 30 years and have witnessed so many people lose the 10 to 20 to 50 pounds but then they regain it so this it's this constant roller coaster of losing the weight and then regaining the weight losing the the, the weight they just recently lost and then regaining it again and i want to help you not do that anymore i want to help you get to that point where you can work on releasing the emotional weight and love yourself because you did. Because as you release the emotion away, you do fall in love with yourself. After all, that is my mission, that is my purpose, that is my calling, is to help each and every one of you release the issues from your tissues as you release the emotion away, while I get to witness you falling in love with yourself. It's a really simple process. So if this is something that's calling on you and, and it's resonating and you're ready, I would love for you to go ahead and email healingwithin76 at gmail.com to redeem your first self-growth discovery session at a special rate. And at that time when you redeem it, that's when you'll find out what that special rate is just for you. So go ahead and email healingwithin76 at gmail.com. With all that being said, I do do hope you enjoy this Capricorn season and know that yes, during Capricorn season, as long as you're willing and ready to release this weight, you will release it. And I want to be there to witness it. So go ahead, email and redeem your special rate for your self-growth discovery session. Till next time, I do look forward to seeing you next month, the first Wednesday, whatever topic we got going on then. But till then, enjoy the rest of your day. And I will hopefully you'll join me next Sunday for my show on Joanne's Healing Within TV show. And I'll share more about what's going on then too. All that being said, have yourself an awesome rest of the day. Enjoy, enjoy this Capricorn season. Enjoy 2022 and know that this is definitely the year to focus on your health, fitness, and wellness and be the healthiest version of you. Bye-bye for now.